so uh, today I will be showing you how to play against the Dutch defense using the London. So you start, first start with d4 and f5 is the Dutch. It's like a reverse Sicilian where in the Sicilian you play e4 and then c5. So d4, f5, and then bishop f4, as always, and then g6, knight f3, uh, bishop g7, and e3, knight f6, this is still pretty much the same. And as you can see, it's kind of uh, the same as the, the uh, king's Indian defense with the fianchetto and it's basically the same structure but with a extra pawn on f5 and then bishop b2 uh the reason for bishop b2 instead of bishop c4 or bishop d3 is because uh if bishop c4 black can just play d5 and it'll end up going to e2 anyways and then he just gets a head in development. And bishop d3 has the problem of uh, the pawns. They're kind of just blocking the bishop's view of the king side and therefore it's kind of useless. d5, c4, it's pretty much the same, but uh, uh, well, the bishop has no future on d3, and when black plays e6, uh, it's definitely, there's definitely no way the, the bishop's gonna do anything. Rather on e2, I guess you could maybe play knight e5, h4, and help the, uh, h, the kingside attack. So, that's why... Bishop e2 is what I think is the best, d6, and bishop h2. Uh, here you can totally play castle, it's just that uh, playing bishop h2 just, uh, just already does what you have to do later, so it's not really like a big deal. And after knight c6, you can you can also play c6, which is which has the idea of bringing the queen out. But now after castle, queen b6, you can just ignore the queen. And then if he plays king h8 to maybe prevent any queen trade, uh, or just like any type of uh king checks or whatever uh so king h8 and then rook e1 c5 the point of c5 is to put on pressure so i guess that's another uh another pro of the queen b6 move and now bishop d3 uh a5 a4 and then just play c3 and for whatever reason if uh, black just takes and gets too greedy knight c4 and then queen takes c3 rook a3 and then you just have a forced sequence where he will lose his queen so knight c6 castling and then queen e8 uh, you could also do that in the King's Indian, I guess, but, uh, it's a little better here because you have the center space, I guess. You just have a lot of space on the center, so, yeah. Instead, you could also play King h8, and then c4, e5. And there's a little, like, trick here for black. After d takes, he can play knight e4, 
and the B2 pawn is hanging, so uh, getting away with the free pawn isn't going to work. Knight e4, e takes, and the knight takes, and uh, even though there was a little uh, petty trick, you can just double his pawns and it's not really a big deal. Queen takes, rook takes, and then bishop f3. You're threatening to uh, make it even worse, and there's no way for black to prevent that. Because if he plays this, now a pawn is hanging. And this is pretty much lost. So rook b8, bishop takes e4. And this bishop's gonna have to find another place to attack. Now b3, because again, the bishop has no future here. Rook d3 and rook c1, helping knight c3. Queen e8, c4, and then e5. d takes, d takes, and then knight d5. So here you have the d5 square, which is basically your main point of advantage in the center. After h6, he's threatening to maybe expand on the king side and make an attack. e4 instead is met with knight d4, knight takes, and then e takes. And uh, white's dominant in the queen side, while black's dominant in the king side. Uh, so you can just see a lot of pawns. Queen e7 and queen d2. The point of that is basically just to maybe double up or queen f4. That's a pretty nice idea. And b6, d5, and then knight b5. So the c7 pawn is gonna come under fire and, well yeah. Knight d4, repositioning the knight to probably e6 cause it's an outpost and there's, there's only one, two ways to get rid of the knight and you can just jump back. Bishop c8 and knight c6. So it's basically a trade. If if you just left the bishop on uh, b7, it would have pre prevented knight c6. Now queen f7, f3, uh, trying to peck at the pawn chain and e3. Queen takes, uh, and bishop takes, oh yeah, here, bishop takes b2 and e3. Uh, the pawn was gonna have to either take or e3. And I guess queen takes e3, bishop takes b2 is a little better. So after bishop f6, knight e5, queen g7, f4 and you've basically built a very big pawn chain in the center and the pawn chain here is kind of neutralized so i would consider this to be an adv advantageous position for white now h6 queen c7 and your idea is basically just to bring the rooks on to the open file. And you're putting your queen on the closed file so then you can help the attack. Rook f7, a3, and rook b1. e4, knight d2, and then you play b4, and bishop b6, knight d5. And then over here, your pawn structure isn't that good, but uh, there are a lot of open files and the queen side is basically 
already destroyed because you can play this and then this and then this and then everything while black still has a long, long way to go in the king side so uh oh yeah here oops you can also play e4 did i show this oh yeah i already did well yeah i think that's about it for the Dutch defense in this variation with g6. I think there are also a lot more with knight f6 and e6. And I think a, a few of them don't even like Fianchetto, so yeah. There's gonna be a lot more parts to this. But yeah, thanks for watching, and yeah, bye.